Good health to all from Rexall. From Hollywood, it's the Jimmy Durante Show. And Rexall drug stores who carry the complete line of top quality Rexall drug products bring you the Jimmy Durante Show with Peggy Lee, Candy Candido, Roy Bargy and his orchestra, yours truly, Howard Petrie, and Jimmy's guest star, Victor Moore. Folks, you'll be glad to hear that Jimmy's recuperating nicely and will be back on the show in two weeks. But volunteering his services to stand in for Jimmy tonight is his good friend and your good friend, one of America's great personalities, Bob Hope. <laughs> Howard. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob substituting for Jimmy Durante Hope, telling all you lovers, use Pepsodent with the girls and you'll be a smash. If you don't, you'll end up going steady with Mrs. Calabash. <laughs> well, I'm happy about filling in for Durante tonight while he's recuperating. I dropped over to see Jimmy this afternoon. As I walked through the door, one beautiful nurse was holding his hand, another was stroking his forehead, and the third was running her fingers through his hair. I think he'll be a long time convalescing. <laughs> But Jimmy is really getting the best of care. While I was there, one of the doctors popped in, took one look at him and said, Ah, oh, this patient looks fine. And he pointed to Jimmy Schnoz and said, But I'm afraid the baby's a little overweight. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> yes, sir. But they operated on Jimmy uh, New Year's Eve. They wouldn't let me stay for the opening, so I went down and saw the opening. <laughs> is that that good? <laughs> figure on anything there. I love gravy. <laughs> so I went down for the opening of Road to Rio at the Paramount. I thought I got around to that pretty cute, too. <laughs> Boy, what a night to hold a premiere. One drunk stepped up to the ticket winner. The girl started pressing the ticket button. He said, here's five dollars for the kitty. Play old anxiety. <laughs> Should have stayed with my opening. Everything was going great until they flashed down the scene where Crosby and I take the boat for South America. Just as the boat was pulling out of the picture... Three drunks ran up to the screen, yelled, Bon Voyage, and tried to climb aboard. <laughs> and I wouldn't exactly say the people were having fun in the theater, but Crosby, Lamour, and I stopped what we were doing on the screen to watch a couple in the balcony. <laughs> and there was a bad accident out front when a drunk drove his car right into the theater. He thought the road to Rio was a shortcut to Azusa. <laughs> all, uh... All... Which one are you working on? <laughs> All the celebrities turned out for the opening. Clark Gable was there, but they wouldn't let him in. He had 25 bags of popcorn. The limit is four. <laughs> he came formal, and that's the first time I ever saw a tuxedo with feathers sticking out of the bag. <laughs> Imagine $200 for six ducks. Well, it's still cheaper than you can get them at the butcher shop. <laughs> And I ran into Frank Morgan in the lobby. He was complaining that his fine should have been $100 instead of $200. His ducks were only half shot. <laughs> Thank you, Seagrams. What an audience. What an audience in that theater. I was telling my biggest jokes on the screen, and I heard a guy crying, so I went over, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, Look, friend, drunkenness is a curse. Why don't you join Alcoholics Anonymous? He said, I did yesterday. This picture is part of the cure. <laughs> And when Crosby was singing his big number, a drunk staggered into the theater down the aisle, put one foot up on the orchestra rail and, rail and yelled, Stop that yapping, bartender, and get me a scotch and soda. <laughs> but the Paramount wasn't the only theater having trouble with the customers on New Year's Eve. It was so bad at the hitching post, Roy Rogers and the Indians got together and started shooting back at the audience. <laughs> Hey, Bobby, I'm yes, sorry sir. to interrupt you, but there's a man here to see Jimmy, and he says it's very important. It's Jimmy's old pal, Mr. Ripple, the United States Commissioner of Rivers and Waterways. Oh, well, I'll talk to him. Glad to meet you, Mr. Ripple. <laughs> Shut that sewer. This guy must be a Republican. His conversation comes out kind of dewy. I'm sorry, Mr. Ripple. Jimmy isn't here tonight, but maybe I can help you. Well, we're having a lot of trouble with the reservoir. Would you mind adjusting your nozzle and sprinkling that line at me again? 
Marty said we're having a lot of trouble with the reservoir. This kid must have been running uphill. His radiator is boiling over. <laughs> well, what's the trouble with the reservoir? <laughs> What do you hear from Listerine? <laughs> well, Mr. Holt, the water mains are all clogged up with salmon who get caught going upstream to spoon. You mean to spawn? No spoon. I'm talking about the ones that aren't married. <laughs> That's what I like about fish jokes. When they lay eggs, they lay caviar. <laughs> if this is serious, Mr. Hope, how can I keep the salmon from clogging up the water mains? Well, I could lend you Jerry Colonna. You could use his mustache as a strainer. <laughs> well, a strainer. <laughs> Try to save it, will you please? <laughs> I'll shift in a second. Go ahead. Mr. Hope, when you first went on the air, I thought you were very funny. And after hearing you tonight, I've only got one thing to say. What's that? Thanks for the memory. <laughs> glad he left. He caught me without my water wings. <laughs> well, what happens now, Bob? Well, Howard, it was nice meeting you and Mr. Ripple, but I've listened to this program many times, and the person I'm particularly anxious to meet is Peggy Lee. I understand she's a girl. Hello, Bob. That proves it. Peggy Lee. <laughs> oh, Peggy, you're a vision of feminine pocatrudence. <laughs> <laughs> the writers forgot Durante wasn't on the program this week. <laughs> well, thanks for the pretty words, hey? You're looking pretty good yourself. <laughs> In fact, I don't remember when I've seen you looking so good. Yes, I am looking good. When I've seen enough, I'll stop looking. <laughs> you know, Peggy, let's work this way, huh? <laughs> These boys think right. You know, Peggy, I have, I have a collection of your records at home, and I think they're wonderful. Well, thank you, Bob. But wouldn't it be great if we had a record with you on one side and me on the other? Yeah, and then maybe some night I could crawl through that little hole in the record and get over to your side. <laughs> a little sample of what I'd find over in your side, Peggy. Well, I've got a little arrangement here of I'll Dance at Your Wedding. Sing it, Peggy, and sing it pretty. Jimmy's listening. I'll dance. Oh, yes, I'll dance at your wedding. I'll dance at your wedding. I'll dance at your wedding. I'll have a wonderful time. I'll drink to your father. I'll drink then I'll have another for all lang syne. I'll kiss all the bachelors, the young and old, and then I'll have myself another drink and kiss them all again. I'll dance at your wedding. I won't miss that wedding. I'll dance at your wedding. Something old and something new Everybody will kiss the bride But I'll save a few for you I'll dance at your wedding I won't miss that wedding I'll dance at your wedding Am I gonna shine at your wedding and mine? Yes, you can be sure that more than 2,000 different drug products are pure when they bear the name Rexall. For the familiar name Rexall stands for purity, quality, and reliability in a complete line of drug products. It's no wonder that Rexall has won first place in the medicine cabinets of millions of American homes. So for any and for all of your drug needs, always buy Rexall at Rexall drug stores throughout the nation where 25% of America buys its drug products. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign, a Rexall identification. Good health to all from...
from Rexall. What a nice commercial. It makes me homesick for Miriam. But let's see what's, uh, <laughs> let's see what's next on the sheet here. Pardon me, Mr. Help. I'm Candy. <laughs> <laughs> This is Candy. His head must have one of those hard centers. Well, I want to read a little poem I wrote when I heard you were going to be on the show. Well, go ahead. Uh. <laughs> now I know what made Durante ill. Well, it goes like this. I'm feeling mighty nosed. He makes a lovely couple, doesn't he? <laughs> Sounds like the mating voice of a virus X germ. But let him. <laughs> But ready right here now to join me in the pinch hit spot for the schnoz is one of his good friends from show business, the glamorous, dashing, romantic star of the corset crowd, Victor Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, John. It's wonderful to be here with you, my old pal, Jimmy Durante. Now hold it, please. I'm not Jimmy Durante, but you're close. This is what Durante would look like if his nose had developed a puncture. But surely, Victor, you know who I am. Listen to this. Thanks for the memory. Oh, now I know you. You're Hilda guy. <laughs> I'd better get a haircut or a longer handkerchief. <laughs> but, Victor, for your information, I'm Bob Hope. After all, we knew each other years ago. Yeah, that's right, Bob. I remember when we were partners way back in Waterville. Mm -hmm. The manager fired you. <laughs> yeah, he fired me and kept you. Yeah, too bad. Tell me, did you ever get another job? <laughs> Where have you been, boy? I work all the time. I mean, besides cutting for Crosby. <laughs> Please, you may be a victor, but I don't want any more. <laughs> Well, you may be Bob, but I don't think there's much hope. <laughs> ah, if you're listening to Randy, we've got a million of them, a million of them. <laughs> well, Victor, speaking of Crosby, you know, old Flab and Drab is quite a boy on the links. This week he's holding a golf tournament at Pebble Beach. Boy, I'll bet he's out there breaking records. No, Bing's not going to try and break any records this year. Why not? Petrillo won't let him make any new ones. <laughs> I don't know what the poor kid will do for money. It's a shame, you know? <laughs> well, you know, Bob, life. I sure wish I could appear in some of those road pictures with you like Bing does, but I guess I just haven't got what it takes. Oh, I don't know. Your ears are like Bing's. Your eyes are like Bing's. You even got hair like Bing's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look at the difference in our ages. Oh, don't let that bother you. With a little makeup, you can look as old as he does. <laughs> You know, in a way, you're even built like Bing. You both have that new look, ankle-length tummies. Yeah, my stomach has been out longer than the Republicans. <laughs> but I guess I haven't got the physique to be in the road pictures. Well, on the level, Vic, you haven't got a bad figure at all. As a matter of fact, I'd even say you have the body of Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor? Mm-hmm. See, Barbara Stangler is sure going to be sore when she sees what I've done to it. <laughs> Hi, fellas. What's cooking? Well, nothing yet, but stick around. We'll open a can of Sterno. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at your dog, yeah. <laughs> this kid has the makings of another Mortimer Schnurd. <laughs> Peggy, we were just talking about Victor being in the next road picture in place of Crosby. Hmm, sounds exciting. And I've got just the locale for you. The road to Scotland. Scotland? Oh, that's fine. Dorothy Lamour in a sarong with a wisp broom hanging on it. <laughs> oh, Dorothy will love it. Scotland with its beautiful highlands and its rambling moors. Ah, that's for me. There's nothing I like better than rambling through the moors and making law with Dorothy. <laughs> 
don't try to figure it out, folks. We spent all afternoon cutting the script, and I think we threw away the wrong part. <laughs> Look, Peggy, while Victor and I figure out the plot of our next road picture, why don't you sing something? Well, as long as you ask, Bob, I'll sing that great tune from Allegro, The Gentleman is a Dope. The Gentleman is a Dope? Hmm, rhymes with hope. Everybody's so sweet around here, you know? <laughs> Gentleman is a dope, a man of many faults, a clumsy Joe who wouldn't know a rumba from a wall. The gentleman is a dope, and not my cup of tea. Why do I get in a dither? He doesn't belong to me. gentleman isn't bright he doesn't know the score a cake will come he'll take a crumb and never ask for more the gentleman's eyes are blue but little do they see why am i beating my brains out he doesn't belong to me Somebody else's problem She's welcome to the guy She'll never understand him Half as well as I The gentleman is a dope very smart he is just a lug you'd like to hug and hold against your heart the gentleman doesn't know how happy he could be look at me crying my eyes out as if he belonged to me the gentleman doesn't care about me the gentleman does all right without me the gentleman the gentleman is a dog here's a 60 second story from the Rexall laboratory there are many things which can't be seen with the human eye and among them are chemical changes in dark liquids that's why the Rexall Control Laboratory uses an instrument called a titrimeter, which contains an electric eye. The electric eye actually blinks when a chemical change occurs in a solution, a change which never could be noticed by the eye of man. And what's the significance of the titrimeter? Well, it's only one of the many instruments used daily in the Rexall Laboratory for scientifically measuring, analyzing, and testing Rexall drug products. But it's one more strong reason why... You can always depend on any product that bears the name Rexall. So for any and for all of your drug needs, always buy Rexall at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall Identification. Good health to all from Rexall. Well, Victor, are you all set to fill in for Crosby? You bet. Get a load of this. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Boo, 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 boo. Please don't give the audience any ideas. Look, why did you, uh, why did you pick white Christmas? Christmas is 12 months away. With my wind, I have to start early. <laughs> Well, I guess we're all set to start our road story. I don't know what'll happen, but one thing's sure, we meet Dorothy L'Amour. Dorothy L'Amour. Oh, boy. If my scoutmaster is listening, I'm not practicing my knots tonight. <laughs> please, boy, please. Your tenderfoot badge is spinning, please. Now, there's only one more thing more we need. I'll turn on the radio here and get us a little mood music. Okay, fellas, give me the ball. We got time for just one more. Let's go, fellas. Time for just one more. How do you like that? It's a week since the Rose Bowl game, and Michigan is still making touchdowns. <laughs> hey, but come on. 
It's Bob Hope and Victor Bing Crosby Moore in the greatest road story of them all. The Road to Pismo Beach. <laughs> oh, what a miserable life this is. You and I, two lowly beachcombers. Yeah, for two years we've been here in Pismo Beach trying to find the lost idol of the Incas. If we find it, we're rich. Well, one of our problems is solved. At least we'll eat today. Look, the salmon are running. I know, the salmon are running. But who's that fellow standing there in the water pleading with them? That's Henry Wallace. He'll do anything to get someone to run with him. <laughs> well, things could be worse. I didn't tell you, but last night I had a date with a mermaid. But a mermaid is half woman and half fish. After two years in Pismo Beach, who cares? <laughs> Well, I know the idol of the Incas is around here someplace. Well, I'm getting discouraged. There's a fellow sitting over there. Why don't you ask him if he knows where the idol is? Okay, I'll talk to him. Tell me, mister, who are you? I said, who are you? It's no use, Victor. He's a grain speculator and won't give his name. <laughs> I'll check with Amici. Well, there's only one thing to do. That's what you get for reading. I know a beautiful... I know a beautiful senorita in Mexico who knows where the idol is hidden. Senorita Lola. Let's go down there. Maybe she'll tell us a secret. But it's off to Mexico and those wonderful dishes. Tortilla, tejose, enchiladas, and Carmen Miranda. <laughs> Carmen Miranda? Can you think of a better Spanish dish? Let's go. <laughs> ah, this heat. This horrible Mexican heat pounding down with a relentless fury, disregarding our lack of water. How can we go on? We must have water. Do you hear me? Water! 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 Bob, oh. it isn't hot. Why are you doing that? Every year I make at least one try for the Academy Award. <laughs> Let's get going. What would Crosby do at a time like this? Well, there's Senorita Lola's hacienda right there. Bing would saunter over beneath her balcony and serenade her. Here's your guitar. Luck, kid. Okay, here goes. Boo, 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 There, beautiful Senorita. Tell me how you like my voice from your own tender lips. What a place to run into a Sinatra fan. <laughs> oh, now I recognize you. You are the romantic travelers, Hope and Cross B. That's right, senorita. We came here to find the Inca idol, and you're the only one who knows where it is. It's buried. Yes, sir. Sounds like the kind of a straight line I'd read to Kelowna. <laughs> Not so fast, Kisnut. I will only give the secret uh, of the idol to the one I love. Who, me? No, it is the other one. Little Bucket Punk. <laughs> Good luck, kid. <laughs> Most of my friends call me Hot Lips. <laughs> oh, senor, you have swept me off my feet. You have swept me to the clouds. You have swept me to the heavens. What am I, a lover or a Hoover vacuum cleaner? <laughs> How do you like it, even when Bing looks like Victor Moore gets the girl? <laughs> this is one Crosby I'd like to transcribe to a more inconvenient time. Ah, uh, my little pudgy one, you are wonderful. For the price of one kiss, I will tell you where the Inca idol is. I will kiss you so hard, you spin in circles. Ah, that's silly. Nobody could kiss me so hard, I spin in circles. Go on, pucker up. <laughs> Does anybody want to buy a short, fat yo-yo? <laughs> oh, oh, your kiss was marvelous. And now I will tell you where the Inca idol is. It is buried in Pismo Beach. Pismo Beach? That's where we were looking in the first place. Well, come on, Victor. It's back on the road to Pismo Beach. Let's hurry. Some clams are having a people bake tonight. <laughs> you see, people usually have clams. The clams... <laughs> Not much there. Durante, you'd better hurry back. Your writers are drunk with power. Hurry back. Look, senior reader Leo R Lola was right. 
There's the Inca idol, and standing in front of it is a beautiful native girl. At last, we've reached our goal. Tommy, native girl, we're Hope and Crosby. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Dorothy Lamour. <laughs> Forgive us, Paramount. We're working on a short budget. <laughs> Gosh, Miss Lamore, I think you're wonderful. But how do you keep that sarong up? We collect in strong senses. <laughs> well, what are you doing standing in front of the Inca idol? Well, me beautiful Inca princess. Listen to native Inca songs. If I didn't care... Honey, child, if I didn't care... Would I feel this way? Now, honey, would I feel this way? If I didn't... How do, you, how do you like that? The Inca spots. <laughs> oh, Bob, do you realize that we're rich? Our search is ended. Yes, and the old legend of the idol is that whoever finds it will hear secret words from its lips. Look, the idol is starting to speak. This is the supreme moment. Listen to the words of the Inca idol. Inca, Inca, Inca. Inca. A dink a doo, a dink a doo, a doo Everybody wants to get into the act. Oh. Friends, here are those foremost Rexall reminders for the week. Remember, 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drugstores. Remember, Rexall is that large and respected family of more than 2,000 different drug products. Remember, you can always depend on any drug product bearing the name Rexall. Remember, Rexall drug products are available in Rexall drugstores everywhere. And as Jimmy Durante always says, I do my shopping at a Rexall store, buying Rexall drugs, and a furthermore, but Jimmy Durante, he prefers them to, we buy Rexall, that's all. How about you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Hope again. I know that a lot of you are too busy to drop in at your local stationer and pick out a get-well-quick card for Jimmy. So what do you say that you and I send him a radio card that says, Dear Schnoz, when it comes to friends, we're stealing one of your own lines. Ah, Durante, you've got a million of them. Sign the American public. You know, you often hear the old saying, there's no business like show business. And one of the main reasons is the little guy with a big nose and the heart to match. Talk about a big heart. That wallet of Jimmy's gets open more times a day than the front door at Macy's. And when it comes to butching up the English language, nobody can touch him. But any old buddy down on his luck can touch him for the shirt off his back. We in show business love the guy. There's nothing in the world we wouldn't do for him and vice versa. Believe me, the world needs more Jimmy Durantys. But as long as there's only one, I just want to say, hurry back, Schnoz. Your good friend America is getting mighty lonesome for you. Good night, folks. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Mr. Tabernacles. Thank you, Victor Moore, and thank you, Bob Hope, for volunteering your services. I know the Schnauz appreciates it as much as all of us and Rexall do here. Well, Rexall for tonight from Peggy Lee, Candy Candida, Roy Bargy, Dave Barry, who plays Mr. Ripple, and yours truly, Howard Peters. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>